Hey guys, I'm Mrs. Long and I'm one of your math teachers for fourth grade. Um, I am coming to you because I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks that will help you along with your math lesson. So this video is going to go over some of the concepts that you're finding in the very first unit of your curriculum. All right. So one thing that I want to emphasize that's really important with math is understanding vocabulary. And you hear a lot about vocabulary in other subjects. You know, you need to understand the words that you're reading. Well, you need to understand the words that are in math problems too. You need to have a good math vocabulary. One thing that you could do to maybe help you to remember different vocabulary words for any of your subjects would to be make a, would be to make a word wall. All right, and that would be where you would put the words and the definitions up in your schooling area so that you are able to refer back to them and remember them. Because the more times you see things, the more times you read it, the more times you hear it, the more likely your brain is to think it's important enough to remember. Okay, so one of our first vocabulary words that we're going to talk about today is the word digits. Digits stands for any single number, zero through nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are all digits, okay? And in bigger numbers, our digits have value. That means that they have an amount that they're worth and their place within the number determines their value. Okay, so imagine this for me. If you had five pennies, you have five nickels, and you have five dimes. All of those you have five of, right? There's the same digit, but the coins have different values. So because the worth of the pennies is one, you have five cents with the five pennies. Because each of the nickels is five, you have 25 cents. And then because each of the dimes is worth 10 cents, you have 50 cents, even though each coin you have the same digit of, you have five of them, okay? Same thing with numbers. Now, when we look at big numbers, and this year you're gonna go up to the 100 millions place. So that's nine digit numbers, which is huge. That's a big number. There are some tricks to help you to remember the places. So to, to go over that, I'm gonna tell you guys a story, okay? This is a story of a place called Number Valley. Now in Number Valley, a long time ago, there was only one family that lived there. And that family had three children. Their oldest child was named 100. The middle child was named 10. And the youngest child was named one, okay? And so these kids lived and they were happy in Number Valley. And every time their mom needed them to come in for dinner, she'd go out in the backyard and she'd yell, 100, 10, 1, time for dinner. And they'd all run up to the house and they would have their dinner and they lived happily. And then they got a neighbor, all right? They got new neighbors. And you know what's really funny is their neighbors also had three kids. And their oldest kid was also 100. Their middle kid was also 10. And their youngest was also one. Uh-oh. I don't know if you've ever been in the class with somebody who has the same name as you, but it can get confusing, right? Because if the teacher calls out 100, which one's gonna respond? You have to add a last name. Okay, so it wasn't too bad with just two families, but then a third family moved into Number Valley. Can you guess how many kids they have? I bet you guessed three. And if you had to guess, can you figure out their names? The oldest was 100, the middle was 10, and the youngest was one. Well, now the parents were running into some trouble because when they would go out in the backyard and they'd call 100, 10, 1, time for dinner, the kids would all run up, but they didn't know which, who, who they were calling. They didn't know which group of kids needed to come in. So they had to do something. Now, the very first family that moved in were like, we're number one, because they were the first family. So they added the last name ones, okay? And then they decided, you know what? Let's build a fence because that will make it even clearer where our yard is. 
The second family said, you know what? We are going to be the thousands family. Okay? And they also built a fence. And then the third family said, you know what last name we want to have? We want to be the millions family. And now it made it so much easier because now they had last names. Okay, so if you want to use this story to help you, let me show you how it can help you. Let's say I write a number. Let's say I write That's a big number, right? You might be looking at that thinking, oh my word, that's a big number. And you're right, it is a big number, <laughs> okay? And big numbers can be tricky. And if I said, what digit, what value does that digit have? You might be thinking, I have no idea. But here our number valley story can help us, okay? Because if you look, here's the ones family, or period, it's called a period in math. Here is the thousands family. Here is the millions family. And within each one, remember the oldest is always the hundred. So because this is the middle family, oldest child, that is the hundred thousands place. Okay, I can do this with another number. Let's say I was trying to figure out this number. What place is this? Well, this is the biggest family, my, my newest family, so that's the millions family. It's the middle kid, so that's the tens. This is the ten millions place. So that can really help you to figure out what digit is in which place. So now if I told you that you needed to round to the nearest millions place, you need to know where the millions place is. But you can use this to help you. Now, the one thing that's really interesting about the families in Number Valley is that their youngest kid always is just called the family's name. So this is the ones, this is the thousands, and this is the millions. They just go by the last name. I guess by the time they got to the youngest kid, they're like, oh, I'm just gonna call you by your last name like a football coach would or something, okay? But you could even still call this the one thousands place or the one millions place. Now here's a trick when it comes to reading big numbers because to write a number in word, form, you have to be able to read it because word form is taking what you say and writing it out in words, okay? So the word form of the number, I have to be able to read this big old number. Well, I'm going to show you a trick. I read the number one family at a time and I cover up everything else. And I'm going to tell you that these fences that they built, that's where you say the family's name. You don't say the word millions till you get to the fence. You don't say the word thousands until you get to the fence. So let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let me put my marker down. Okay, I'm gonna cover up this part of the number. I have a three digit number now. In fourth grade, we should all be able to read three digit numbers, right? Because that's something that you've been doing since like first or second grade. All right, so we cover up the end of the number. I have a three digit number. That number is 316. I don't say 3 million 16, right? I don't say any of the word up here until I get to my comma. So what number do I see? That's what I say. So you see it, you say it. 316 million, 427, sorry, you can't really see that. 427, thousand, 359. And now because there's no comma here, I don't say the period or the family's name. So you notice I read it one chunk at a time. And even I, as your math teacher, can look at this big old number and read it wrong if I don't do that. And every time I read a big number, I cover it up and I read it one period or one family at a time. 316 million, 427 thousand, 359, and now I could write that in word form. It would take a while because it's lots of words, but I could write it in word form, all right? And now the other way that we can write numbers, this is called standard form. Word form is writing out the words. In expanded form, we're talking about the value of each digit. 
the value of each digit. I'm gonna do this with a smaller number to start because if I start with this big old number, it might be confusing. I'm gonna start with actually just a three digit number. 357, 357, okay? So when I'm looking at this, what is the value of my three? Well, the three is not worth three, right? This is in the hundreds place. So the value of that three is 300. And when I'm writing it in expanded form, I am adding the values together. What's the value of my five? Well, the five is in the tens place, so it's five tens or 50. And then my value of my seven, well, it's worth seven because it's in the ones place, okay? A little trick with this, let me show it with, to you with a bigger number. Let me pick 357,416. Um, Let's look at this number. Now this one's bigger. It would be a little bit harder to write in expanded form, but it's still not too tricky. Okay, when I'm looking at this, well, this is still 300, but then I have to account for this family here. And you notice this three, would go like right here, and then everything else I write as a zero. Okay, so that three is 300,000 plus, okay, my five would go here, right? And then everything else I write as a zero. So it's plus 50,000. Okay, same thing with my seven. My seven goes in the thousands place, and then I'm gonna write everything else as a zero. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. Same thing with the four, the t one, and the six. Okay, and there's my number written in expanded form. I've taken the value of every digit. What is that digit worth based on its place? So understanding this is going to be the key for the rest of it. Now, sometimes you see a number that's already written in expanded form. Let me grab a paper really quick. That tissue will erase my board a little bit easier than my teeny tiny eraser. All right. Sometimes we see a number that's written in expanded form and it tells you to write it in standard form. Standard means normal. The word standard means normal. And so the standard form of a number is like the normal way you see a number written. Okay, you almost always see numbers represented in standard form. So let's see, I have this right here. I have 20,000 plus 400 plus 60 plus five. And they want me to pick like which one is written in standard form correctly. Here is what I always do. I always look for the number that has the biggest value. That right here is 20,000. How many digits does 20,000 have? One, two, three, four, five. So my answer has to have five digits because 20,000 has five digits, okay? So I always just draw blank spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm gonna drop each digit where it goes. Well, 20,000, that two is in the 10,000s place. So I drop the two there. 400, my four is in the hundreds place. So I drop it where it goes. 60 goes in the tens place. Five goes in the ones place. And here I notice I have a blank space we have a rule, we fill all blank spaces with a zero, okay? Because zeros show up in the middle of numbers, but when I'm writing in expanded form, I don't have to write plus zero, because you know what happens when you add zero? Nothing, right? It doesn't change anything. So right here, I've taken my number in expanded form, and I've changed it into standard form. So again, those are just some different tricks to kind of help you with the lesson. If you're still kind of unsure, I recommend going back and re-watching this video a couple of different times. Really pay attention and think about the different things that we talked about. We talked about how we can identify place value based on the, our number value story. We talked about writing numbers in standard, expanded, and word form, and how to go from one form to another. 
All right, remember when we read big numbers, we cover up one family at a time, even this one, look. 20,465, it makes it a lot easier to read the number correctly, okay? So um, please let me or your math teacher know if you have any questions at all. We are here to help and to support you. There are also great math videos that you can find online. Um, one of my favorites sites is Khan Academy and in the fourth grade toolkit, we have a whole bunch of great Khan Academy videos linked. Another one that you can find on YouTube is called Math Antics and he also has a lot of really great math videos to help support the curriculum. All right, have a great rest of your day. Happy math day and I was think, trying to think of something creative and it didn't pop in my head fast enough. So have a happy math day and um, we will come back with another video soon.